Ark survival ascended just drop, but there's a problem. The evil overseer has arrived and let loose bloodthirsty dinosaurs to take over the world. I plan to take down this monster, but before I do, I must defeat the Broodmother, Megapithecus, and the dragon all in 100 days. This is 100 days of beating Ark survival ascended. I spawned in and realized something's truly never changed. We still have to scratch our arm when waking up. Spawning in, I was in love with how this new game looked. This looks so good, bro. I took a breath of fresh air <coughs> and began gathering the basic resources right off the bat. As we were wasting no time here, a pickaxe was crafted, which I put to good use right away by violating a dodo's rights. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? Okay, maybe I did waste some time by looking at this supply drop, but look how cool it looks. After exciting myself over some pixels on a screen, I started mining nearby river rocks for flint, who could now craft a hatchet. And whilst doing that, I made myself cloth armor. Very nice. I was loving this new arc experience until the compi mafia jumped me. Get wrecked. Don't worry, boys. Drizzle is an absolute machine and kill them with ease. My naked body was naked no more and god damn I look good. We are definitely getting all the girls. I was crossing the river when I spotted an otter. Man, I wish I could swim as good as he can. I decided it was time to head inland and got attacked by some angry bugs. I gave them a taste of my spear, which was more than enough to make their chitin bodies my own. <laughs> I ventured deeper and deeper into your ma- I mean forest and spotted a mummy parasaur with her babies. Look at these things. How do I tame them? Can I tame you? It didn't end well for them. At least this baby got lucky as I realized I could claim him. Wait, what? Alright, we have we have our first tame, boys. I told him that I was extremely sorry for my wrongdoings and promised that I'll take care of him till the day I die. No! I felt no remorse in killing our new baby friend, as cause of him, we lost this parasaur kill. I kept on exploring the jungle deep into the night, stopping for a moment to admire how beautiful the sky looked. Dude, look at the sky with the obelisk. That is so cool, man. I used all the hide we gathered from the parasaur killings to craft myself a wooden shield. Day 2 started with an epic battle against a couple of dilos. It was a close call, but in the end, Drizzle came out on top, as expected. Their skin was used to craft hide armor. Only a few seconds after, we couldn't bear the heat anymore and had to strip down naked. We were still feeling hot. What can I say? I am pretty good looking. The only way to save ourselves was by bolting into the ocean. I cooked up some meat, as I love meat, and went back in for a dip. Looking back at the campfire, I spotted a dilo break it and robbing our lunch. I promise I'll get my revenge. Back on land, I was harvesting a rock when I realized the really epic sounds a Bronto now makes. This thing also had a massive pee. Whilst figuring out how to tackle the heat, we made a shocking discovery. Cloth actually protects you from the sun. Throwing our cloth armor away wasn't very smart. We kept venturing around the surroundings until a light of a supply drop soon caught my attention and like a little child, I ran straight towards it. Surprisingly, it rewarded us with some semi-useful items. That's so cool. I spotted an explorer note right beside it, and Helena is still annoying us even on Ark Survival Ascended. I mean, there are giant obelisks floating in the sky. After telling her to shut up, I crafted a parachute and flew across the water. Upon landing, I terrorized a group of innocent dodos, claiming one as our own. We called him Bob. A mortar and pestle was created, as I really wanted to start taming bigger dinosaurs, which we shall need narcotics to do. Bob just isn't going to cut it. <laughs> Yes, alright. This was a very quick tame, and once he ate enough berries, he was ours. We called him Billy. Billy was soon saddled up, which meant one thing. Bob the Dodo would be left behind. Not the nice thing to do, but definitely the right one. We're on a mission here, and the evil overseer isn't waiting for anybody. Billy and I kept traveling late into the night, until Billy spotted a Fiomia that he wanted dead. I made his wish come true. A group of compies tried stealing our meal, but Billy had our back. Oh boy, do I love Billy. Campfires were set up as day three started, and whilst cooking up the finest steaks, Billy and I farmed a lot of narco berries. Whilst turning these blackberries into narcotics, Billy was jumped by a raptor. I panicked and rushed to his rescue. Luckily, he survived and thank god for that, as I have no idea what I would do without him. I hate this game, bro. Devastated, naked, and afraid, most people would be in shock and feel sorry for themselves. But I'm Drizzle, and Drizzle never gives up. We remain unfazed. We bolted back to the scene, quickly passing by two explorer's notes for some experience. Nearing our loot bag, I robbed everything from the supply drop, including crystal, which will come in super handy very soon. Spotting my loot bag, I rushed in and took what was mine. It wasn't soon long after that I spotted my biggest enemy. 
Billy was avenged. Walking along the beach soon led me to an ancient ruin. I explored around and did some high skilled parkour, making it to the other side of the beach. The crystal we got earlier was handcrafted into a spyglass, which came in very handy to begin scoping out pteranodons. Akarno seemed to have other plans for me. Being the nimble ninja that I am, I made it to safety without a single scratch. I waited for the Carno to move away and plunged into the ocean. We reached shore as day 4 began and started scoping out pteranodons. Taming up a high level pteranodon early on would increase our progress by 6 69,000%. We searched for hours and hours on end. The Argods just didn't like me. Our voyage lasted for half a day until finally we spotted a beautiful sighting. <laughs> yes, yes. I love the bowl at this beast and sprayed it down with tranquilizer arrows. Let's go, let's go, okay. We need to get spikes down, we need to get spikes down ASAP. A baby dodo had to be sacrificed and I fed it to my soon-to-be friend. Some people might call me crazy, but I even built a spike fence around it. As we finished it, she was all tamed up. I named her Pete, which now that I think about it, is a boy's name. Oh well, cry about it. A crawling trilobite was found, which I instantly eliminated to harvest chitin for a pteranodon saddle. Unfortunately though, my hatchet just couldn't hit this thing. I hate this game. Because of this, we had to find a dinosaur that drops chitin or keratin. And sure, we can kill turtles and trikes, but I don't fancy my odds there. I'd rather explore a bit more until we find some ants. This thing kind of looks like my penis. This paid off not too long after, as we got jumped by the ant gang. Oh, that's a lot. Finally having a pteranodon saddle, I took off into the skies and soon got reminded why exactly I wanted to be flying up high, well away from that bloodthirsty ceratosaurus. My plan was to head far up north and build somewhere close to a rich metal deposit. Pete really liked this idea and flew us across the swamps till I came across a hill nearby a mountain with metal, a lake for water access and also Argentavises. This place ticked all of my boxes. As day 5 started, so did the moss deforestation. We chopped down so many trees that we now had a large open grass plain for our base. Construction started with four wooden foundations being placed in a square shape. Yes, I am building a very simple and basic base, but this is only our starter base, so calm down. Wall soon followed. I did have a hard time figuring out Ark's new door and walls building mechanic, but we managed in the end. Ceilings were built to finish the shell of our humble abode. Once complete, I headed out to the nearby mountain to farm metal and a lot of it at that. All was going well until I realized how quick we were freezing to death. I tried my best to make it to our base and light a fire to warm ourselves before it was too late, but our efforts were useless. I also realized that I never placed a bed. I'm extremely, extremely stupid. Back on the beach we go. I spawned super far away from my base, so I took my anger out on a Bronto. Spawning back in, and we were still so far from base. Oh well, I'll just have to bite the bullet here and become a marathon runner after burning 69 million calories. Back, mother. <laughs> I'm back! We at last arrived back at our base on the morning of day 6. The first thing we did was place a bed for obvious reasons. I made sure to place two beds so your mom could join me this evening. <laughs> a forge soon followed, allowing us to cook up all of the metal we had gathered earlier. Once some ingots were ready, we forged them into a smithy. I wanted to place a mortar and pestle down, but I couldn't quite figure out how to get it unsnapped, so it ended up looking super weird. We finally got our hands on metal tools and a crossbow, which meant one thing. We had to tame an epic dinosaur. A trike nearby our base was the perfect victim. Even though she was a very low level trike, she would still be a beast at collecting narco berries, which is all I really wanted. Whilst waiting for her to tame up, a cackle of hyenas pounced on us. My only concern was getting our soon to be friend out of this mess alive. Luckily, I am an ARC veteran, and the only dinosaurs harmed here were these pesky hyenas. Our trike soon tamed up, and we immediately whistled her back to base. Once back home, we made her farm narco berries for hours and hours on end, until the evening arrived, ushering in a wave of cold. There. It became so cold. I couldn't even survive in my own base, even with our forge and campfire lit. I decided to end our misery by cooking myself on the campfire. Upon respawning, I immediately dashed out to gather all the resources we would need to craft standing torches. Ah. Uh. Warmth at last. I don't think warmth is the correct word, as our character is still feeling a tad cold, but hey, at least we're not freezing to death in our own base. Day 7 started by crafting a sickle that I used to, of course, farm a ton of fiber. A preserving bin was placed to store our perishables and narcotics were crafted. Right after, we used these narcotics to put an ankylosaur to sleep. An Anki is great, but pretty useless without an Argentavis. Luckily for us, there was a 145 female Argentavis right near our house. And you know me, I love females. I built a little construction to trap this female, as that is how I usually pick up females in real life. What? 
Once finished, I led the Argentavis over and trapped it. She was extremely hurt from fighting other dinosaurs, so I sacrificed myself, as when a wild dino kills something and eats it, they heal up. My meat wasn't enough for her, so I killed one of her Argentavis friends, and she really enjoyed eating it. Now that this beast had enough health to begin the taming procedure, I put her to sleep. As day 7 came to a close, she was all tamed up. I finished off the day by starting construction on a wooden spike fence to keep our dinosaurs safe from the bloodthirsty Ohio citizens. The morning of day 8 was a special one, as we discovered an enormous new dinosaur. We shall definitely be taming one later. The rest of the morning was spent slaughtering unfortunate dinosaurs, as I really needed hide to finish my spike fence and to saddle all of our new tames. Wood and stone were farmed right after, with the help of our new Argentavis. This was already so much easier. Spikes and a gate were crafted and placed right after, making our base secure from all the crazy Ohio citizens. Or so I thought. I didn't want to freeze to death tonight, so I used my huge brain and went to kill something that drops pelt so I can craft fur armor. Pete spotted the rhino, and we repeatedly used the Pteranodon's special fidget spinner attack. Rest in peace, rhino. We finished off the day with mining metal with our Argent Tavis. I love this thing. I lobbed all of the metal we farmed into the forge as a new day started. Trank arrows were crafted as I have grown enough courage to head into the swamp. Da, da, da. Why are we heading into the swamp, you may ask? I need cementing paste, and instead of stealing it from beavers, I decided to be nice for once and tame a frog, which has the ability to turn bugs into paste. Pete and I flew to the swamp and spotted a level 10. This won't cut it, so I kept looking. And not too long after, I spotted a level 95 female frog, which will do just fine. I made Pete bite her to lead her onto the land, as I am not jumping in the swamp waters. I lobbed the bola onto it right after. She really wanted to lick me, which reminded me of your mom. Once fast asleep, a baby Fiomia was sacrificed, and Bob's your uncle, we had a cementing paste licking machine at our disposal. I ordered her to lick some bugs, providing me with enough cementing paste to craft a saddle. Once riding her, she began and licking everything in sight. Your mom would be super proud. Pace was no longer a worry of ours. Our voyage back to base took the rest of day 9. Upon arriving, our triceratops hopped back in action and more narcotics were made. We finally put that pelt to good use. This fur armor will definitely be getting me all the girls. Now equipped with fur, I wanted to explore the snow a bit deeper. Pete made quick work of an injured mammoth. More pelt for us. Something soon caught my eye. A crevice, splitting the ice bed in two. I don't remember this in Ark Survival Evolved. It also seems abnormally safe for being so far out in the snow. We shall definitely keep this in mind for a future base spot. Back at our abode, I crafted the remaining pieces of fur armor that we were missing. Whilst doing so, Arex rudely interrupted us. Crazy Ohio citizens are evolving and are now capable of jumping over fences. Our trike sadly perished, but that's fine as I have a lot of narcotics and don't need her anymore. I no longer felt safe here, so I decided that the best idea is to find a new base location. I leveled up our Argentavis to make sure we could carry all of our loot with us. I picked up our furniture and spikes, stuffed all of our loot in the Argentavis, and off we go. Sadly, our frog friend has had to be left behind, but I made sure to keep her on the roof so she doesn't die, I hope. Initially, I flew up to the obelisk as having a base up there would be super cool, or so I thought. All the fog soon changed my mind. Flying down the mountain, I remembered about that ice crevice and went to check it out again. This part would make the perfect home. Not only is it enclosed and safe, accessible by only two entrances, it also has a lot of room for all of our future dinosaurs. Wooden spikes were placed at the top to ensure we don't get any dinosaurs falling on us. Day 11 started with violently killing a Daedon who thought it was a good idea to mess with me. It wasn't. I then placed down a wooden gate which will definitely scare away all the angry dinos. Foundations were placed with all the necessary prehistoric furniture right on top. Crafting better items would be essential to beating this challenge. So after doing a quick flint run, I flew our Anki deep into the snow and used its strong and stiff tail to axe some crystal nodes. Once out here, I might as well collect some pearls and obsidian. On our way back home, I picked up two explorer nodes with our Argentavis, making it capable of carrying my fat ass with ease. Spotting some oil nodes nearby, I of course collected more than enough than we will ever need. Back at the abode, I crafted a fabricator. A high level Anki was roaming close to my base, we all know what happened. <laughs> As the Yankee went night night, I figured it was finally time to actually complete the bottom fence with some spikes. Hopefully, no crazy Ohio citizens jump over this one. I really wanted a dinosaur to help me farm wood, so a mammoth was enslaved. Now that we had a wood farming dinosaur, you guessed it, we need a stone farming dinosaur. I spent the rest of day 12 searching for and taming up a Dodicarus, which became our own in the morning of day 13. Let's name him Jason. 
We flew Jason back to base and crafted a very cool looking saddle for our mammoth friend. Friend no more. As even though he started farming like his life depended on it, which it did, this thing was horrible at farming wood. I may or may not feed him to a pack of wolves later. Spotting an alpha carno this close to our base made me feel a bit uneasy. Not only was this mammoth useless at farming wood, he was so fat that he couldn't even fit through our gate. I really hope a pack of wolves eat him. Mr. U Tyrannus above our base thought it was a good idea to roar at us. With my RG scared, I took matters into my own hands. Spike walls truly work wonders. The wolf mafia jumped me right after, which also didn't end well for them. Ark's dinosaurs seemed to really underestimate my true power. The day ended by using Jason's massive peen to harvest some stone rocks. This thing was an absolute farming chad, unlike that stupid mammoth. Why are you bullying me? As the sun rose on day 14, I had a realization. Our base looks really ugly. I need to impress all of the girls with my house. A lot of wood was farmed as I aspired to craft a masterpiece. A transcended work of art, ambiguous with such beauty and emotional depth that it would mesmerize anyone upon first sight. I actually just crafted more smithies and pestles and preserving bins and placed them down without much thought. But hey, I must admit, our home is looking pretty good. This refurbishment finished in the afternoon of day 14 with the introduction of a stone behemoth gate. This thing looks super epic. I also placed some storage boxes, but who cares? A carno mummy was lurking right outside my base. Massive mistake from her end. I killed her right in front of her two young children that I of course claimed as my own. Sure, I just killed their mother, but I promised to give them a very long and fulfilling life. <laughs> He just killed himself in the spikes. Day 15 marked a crucial day for us as we shall embark on our most ambitious mission yet. We shall be taming a Spinosaur. Why you may ask? Well, I really wanted to tame an army of ch- Oh wait, what? Of ch- ch- Terras- Ceratosauruses. <laughs> But before you can tame one, you must kill one to get venom spikes which will then be used to tame them. A high level Spinosaur would be the perfect contender to kill these things with. High level my ass. The Ark Gods seem to have turned against me today. I searched and searched only finding low levels until we spotted this beautiful being. Young Drizzy was excited. Oh, I love this game. This game's, this game's the best, this game's the best game boys. This excitement will soon become pure frustration when trying to trap the beast. What? I don't think it's big enough, dude. Dude, it's not- what? I'm not kidding when I say a literal whole day was spent trapping this thing. And finally, on the morning of day 17, this absolute maniac was knocked out. One juvenile parasaur killed later, and Mike was all tamed up. The first thing I did with Mike was take him on top of an explorer's note. This made him extremely excited, which we let out on all the wildlife around us. Mike was an absolute machine, tearing through a Terezina without breaking a sweat. Beaver soon felt Mike's power. On our way back home, we spotted a weird looking mammoth that Mike chomped in seconds. Finally, Finally, a Ceratosaurus was spotted. I was a bit worried at first, but remembered our boy Mikey is an absolute machine. 14 venom spines is more than enough to tame a Ceratosaurus with. We traveled for the rest of the day and arrived home on day 18. We didn't stay long here. All I did was kit up and head back out to tame the mighty Ranyognata. The rest of day 18 was once again a lot of traveling, as these massive bugs spawn around the swamps and redwoods. It wasn't too long till we found one, which I killed on sight. Or tried to at least. Uh... Oh my god, it's gonna kill my... No! It stunned me off again. It shot its liquids onto me, which did distract me a little bit, but in the end, Drizzle always clutches up. Upon investigation, I realized that female rhinos do not drop the pheromone darts that I wanted. Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. A lot of time was spent scouting until we finally found another one. It was a female. My luck is very bad. I killed it anyways to make more spawn, so hopefully we can find a male and get a pheromone dart. Our wishes were answered a bit later. I think I hear one. Yes, I do. Male, male, male. Oh, yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! Back home we went, arriving on day 20. Penguins were slaughtered. Instant Karma paid a quick visit in the form of a Utyrannus. You already know though. Drizzle clutched up. Oh, my PT is up there. But it has follow on him. He should follow, right? Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> We made it boys. The penguin sacrifices were all for good reason. Your boy now had a shotgun to use. No one is safe anymore. I now had to figure out what dinosaur I wanted to sacrifice in order to tame a rhino gnata. For those that don't know, you tame these beasts by feeding a pheromone dart to one of your dinosaurs and when the big bug is close to death, it will inject its baby inside your dinosaur which will then explode. Whoever invented this taming method at wildcard is extremely creative. A day done will do just fine. If only he knew why we were taming him up. Poor soul. 
ammunition was made and off we went. I made sure to level up our fat pig so he can survive a few good hits from the rhino. Day 21 was the big day. I found a male which is of no interest to us so I killed it. A few hours passed and there she was, a beautiful female rhino gnata. We chased her down and it began spraying her fluids at us. We finally successfully got it to really low HP but for some reason our pig wasn't able to eat the pheromone dart. This left me no choice but to save ourselves. It turns out only larger dinosaurs can eat this thing. Oh well, time to tame a paracer. The following day, another bug was found. We led it back to the racer and well, it didn't go as planned. No! Oh my god, bro. Getting humiliated again wasn't an option. So this time, not only did I tame a paracer, I also tamed a trike. So in case the bug kills one, I can sacrifice the other. My brain is huge. A few hours of swamp exploring later and we found a level 5 rhino. It was a female, so yes, we are taming it. We led it back to our dinos. I landed immediately and fed the pheromone dart to our trike, spraying it down with our shotgun when just as Land, and before you knew it, this beast was ours. Rest in peace, our track. He will not be missed. Oh my god! Even though we made a massive W, there was a problem. Big ass bug was still a baby and couldn't fly, and there was no way I'm walking this thing back to base, leaving me with one option build a fort around this thing to protect it. The Fortnite tryhards are definitely proud of me. Whilst waiting for a little bro to grow up, I farmed metal. No, that is oil, what? And on day 24, we spawned back at the bed I had placed nearby him, and he was all grown up. Seeing that his saddle needed polymer, many penguins had to go. Oh, Rhino Granata saddle. WWW. We saddled up big ass bug and realized that we need resin to actually pick up dinosaurs. Yeah, that's gonna be a pain. Flying back to base took until day 25, as big ass bug has really bad stamina. After all, he was a level 1 tame. Before heading out to solve our wood problem, I quickly placed a bit more layers of security. This was done so no dinosaurs can creep in and kill our new tame, because if that had to happen, I would lose 5 days of progress and would resort to smashing in my monitor. With defenses complete, I forged a beaver saddle, as I know for certain those things are great at farming wood, unlike our stupid mammoth. Off we went on an adventure, keeping our eyes peeled for those obese wood farming machines. We spent the whole day searching for one to no avail, until we did eventually find a level 15. Oh my god bro, a level 15? Infuriated with how bad this thing was, I violently tore it apart with the Argentavis' razor sharp claws. I spotted its friend, which was also a level 15. While really dislikes me. The search continued and on the morning of day 26 we spotted another beaver which was getting eaten by a not too friendly baryonyx. I tried saving it and ended up killing it instead. Oh, my, oh it was a level 5. A pack of raptors soon spotted me and well thought that it was time for breakfast. Oh my god bro what is this game? Pete came in clutch and flew us back to the crime scene. Luck was on our side as our Argentavis grew a brain and decided to stay afloat in the air, which is the only reason he's still alive. Spotting my loot bag, I jumped off, soon realizing that a raptor was dashing at me. I had enough at this point, so I started to pick them off one by one with the Argentavis. Getting revenge felt good, really good. After reviewing our items, I spotted a level 30 beaver, still a really low level, but the best we've been able to find after an entire day of exploration. We flew it back to our base and spotted two crazy Ohio citizens tearing down our fence. I took the necessary precautions and led one away. The other carno calmed down so I decided to leave him alone. Oh boy was this a mistake. I shifted my attention back to the beaver and put Lil Bro to sleep in no time. The crazy Ohio citizen finally found a way around our fence and began biting at my dinosaurs. This Ohio citizen didn't take into account that my dinosaurs were trained fighters and soon got overwhelmed. Our new friend was put to work and finally we had a good way of harvesting long and hard logs of wood. This wood was used to craft gates as we needed to repair our fence. This was completed right as when day 27 started. Ah, much better. A red drop was looted for the first time in these 100 days. Surprisingly, it gave us items that we could actually use. Now this is also a good time to mention that I added a cryopod mod as I really miss them from Ark Survival Evolved. Our day soon became 69 million times better, a 145 female Teresina, posting 29 points into melee damage before tame. You already know we're knocking this thing out. Discovering I could shoot from the top of our Rhino Gnata was a great discovery, unlike finding out that we were out of stam. After a quick wake up call on how fragile our bug was, I continued firing arrows into this very aggressive chicken until it went night night. Whilst waiting for it to tame up, I visited the sap taps we had placed earlier. My Rhino Gnata came in exceptionally handy as we could stand on top of its back whilst looting the sap. Once back near the knocked out Teresina, I spotted an injured Bronto and her baby. I wanted to make the baby one of my own 
one, so Mike was used to slaughter its mother. Upon claiming the baby, we used our cryopod to keep it safe. For those that don't know, cryopods are pretty much Arg's version of a Pokeball. The Teresina tamed right after. We named her Tickle Chicken. Oh my! 42 melee and 43 weight dude this is such a beast the next dinosaur on the taming list was a ceratosaurus i wanted to tame an army of them to take down the bosses or try to at least a level 25 male was spotted as the next day came along such a low level male was useless for me so i decided to kill it with my spine no oh Oh no. Oh no! Fortunately for us, I had a shotgun on hand and soon gunned down the bloodthirsty lizard. I now had to wait ages for the spinal to wake up. But hey, at least we now had a Fiombi on our side. Mike finally decided to wake from his slumber and we went Ceratosaurus hunting once again. Another low level was spotted, so we killed it in hopes of better ones spawning again. This didn't happen, of course, as the Argods hate me. After killing those two Ceratos, I had enough venom spines to craft a hemoglobin cocktail. I went on the lookout for Ceratosauruses but couldn't find any, so returned home where I repeatedly stabbed myself with a blood syringe to craft more of those hemoglobin cocktails. For the first time in my life, I was a responsible dinosaur owner and put berries and meat in a trough, ensuring none of my dinosaurs will be hungry. I wanted to test out our giant box abilities, so I collected more sap to turn into resin and began unloading our liquids upon anything we came across. Oh! Oh! That was a close call. The Ceratosaurus hunting continued on day 29, and after killing two bad ones, we finally found a level 100. I rode my Daedon up to it and got its attention. Once it started taking bites at us, I fed my fat pig the hemoglobin cocktail. This cocktail makes the angry bees drunk, as shown from the purple text right there. Only 5%. Yeah, my Daedon is going to have to take an absolute beating. A lot of munching later, it became drunk enough to get tamed. I realized that it's a passive tame, so I fed it some high quality prime meat and boom. I mean BOOM! We had our very own Ceratosaurus. I saddled our new friend up and began testing it out. It was super quick and made really quick work of nearby dinosaurs. I absolutely fell in love with its sprinting ability, making us go at super sonic speeds, tearing down anything in our path. I wanted to level it up, so I collected an explorer's note and killed one of those weird looking mammoths. By the time we were back at base, it was already day 30. I came to the realization that our Bronto had starved. Oh well, I made sure this will never ever happen happen again and farmed a ton of berries with our mammoth. I of course turned all of the narco berries into narcotics as we shall be going out to tame more epic dinosaurs. A high level male Teresina shall do me just fine. We now had a breeding pair and could start raising an army of these angry chickens. It finished taming up right after day 30 ended. We named him Soo. Day 31 was spent searching for more ceratosauruses to add to my army. We killed a lot of these things and soon came across a 130 male. After getting him drunk I quickly went to grab some prime meat but all was for nothing as by the time i was back he was already out of his drunk stage and could no longer be tamed yes i did smash my keyboard after that massive l i handled my misery by repeatedly extracting my own blood because we just wanted a ton of hemoglobin we crafted up the hemoglobin that we lost and decided that it was finally time to craft a generator and some air conditioning units we celebrated this breakthrough in technology by making the teresinas have Search. Our air conditioning units allowed us to finally hatch an Ankylosaurus egg. We named our new spiky friend Spike. Day 33 was a day of exploration. I collected an explorer note with our bug. Another note was found boosting my Rhinognathus XP to over 9000. Many Ceratosaurus level checks later, we finally stumbled across a level 135 male. We of course tamed it up. It came out with very mediocre stats, but we will take it. At this point, I was bored of exploring the land and was eager to dip my toes into the ocean. Upon diving in, all the dolphins instantly got attracted to me. I don't blame them, cause all the girls do this when I flex my arc dinosaurs in the club. We tamed one up in no time and began exploring the great depths of the very unwelcoming ocean. As day 35 started, an even better dolphin was spotted, which I tamed and abandoned our previous one. I'm sorry bro. For some reason, I thought it was a good idea to explore a deep sea cave. Oh no, oh my god, uh, I'm so dead. A few electric eel jump scares later, we made it to the back where I was pokeballing our dolphin when an eel broke my scuba tank. This was the only tank I had on me, so it would be impossible for me to get out of the cave before I drowned. My fate was pretty much sealed at this point, so might as well get it over quickly, you know? I instantly flew back on Pete, taking a quick pit stop to get prime meat so we could tame another dolphin. Dolphin tamed, back inside we go. Oh no 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 no. 
I really dislike these electric eels. There was no way I would manage to loot my loot bag without all of them around me, so I led them away. After breaking their ankles, looting it was now no issue at all. Once inside, we might as well take a little look around. After some tunnel exploration, we found a drop shining brighter than my future. It rewarded us with an ascendant tier saddle and scuba tank. Oh boy was I hyped. We finally had a scuba tank that wouldn't break from an eel shock. There wasn't much else to see in here, so out we went. I remembered how we desperately needed pearls, so I asked my friend Demian if he knows where they are. He told me down south by the border, so that's where I went. At first, I thought I'd get jumped by a gang, but to my surprise, there were a ton of pearls ready for me to harvest. These were soon used to create the finest of electronics, and to celebrate, we made the Ceratosauruses do their thing. The day ended with some good old metal farming. Give me all this metal. Our metal farming lasted till the morning of day 37. Day 37 didn't get any more fun, as we just farmed stone for the rest of it. This stone was forged into forges. <laughs> See what I did there? 38 started with farming again. Yes, we hate farming, but man, look how much fiber this chicken gets. More aircons were made and used to crack some eggs open. After that, I was supposed to be farming more metal, but got distracted by how good this view looked. God damn. We did sadly spend the rest of the day hitting metal rocks. Day 39, I once again grew the courage to explore the oceans. This little bit of bravery soon evaporated when we spotted the most cursed sea creature in the entire world. Just look at this thing, it even makes you look attractive. After, I spotted another one absolutely violating this manta ray's rights. Excitement filled my soul when a red drop was spotted. Upon opening it, I was very disappointed to say the least. Oh my god, bro. This is so bad, bro. Dashing through the oceans, we once again discovered a new species, two giant turtles eating the absolute crap out of these sharks. You thought that was cool? Well, I even found a pink cursed fish going ballistic. Oh man, I hate the ocean. Just a few meters away from this dancing fish was another fish, but this one was actually useful and was instantly enslaved by us. It would farm us pearls for the rest of its miserable life. Just look at how much pearls it gets. Back at the abode, they were forged into electronics, and once they were done crafting, I queued up hard polymer as I love hard objects. Day 41 began by opening a golden supply drop, even though it looked like it contained pure gold, it had uh, an Anki saddle. I dislike wildcard very much. This area must have been part of the hood as we got jumped by a very aggressive gangster. Your boy always clutches up and of course came out in one piece. I wanted to start making Megatherium babies so when I spotted a low level female, guess what happened? I knocked her out. She tried running away just like my dad did but it was all for nothing. Our big bug was just too quick. Once tamed up, we zoomed across the redwoods and noticed a big cat lurking in the bushes. I'd love me a big cat. So yeah, we had a wild goose chase once again. This time though, I wanted a challenge, so I decided to do it on foot. Let's go, bro. Day 41 ended by murdering a parent Ceratosaurus so I could claim her young. Day 42 marked a special day, an Alpha Rex, probably the most powerful creature on Ark right now, except for the bosses and myself, because you already know, your boy Drizzle is an absolute machine. I wanted to assert dominance over the Rex and show him who the Alpha male truly is. This sounded much more glamorous than it was, I just constantly munched his meat while he munched my meat, till I eventually got low on HP points and ran away to heal up with my Daedon. I did this a few times and before you knew it, I was the new official alpha male of Ark Survival Evolved. Ascended. I, th I mean ascended. Whoops. The Ark God soon rewarded me for this achievement. Two female Stratosauruses. One is even level 135. This was the most beautiful sighting I've ever seen, except for your mum. Our Daedon, of course, had to take a beating. Man, I feel bad for him. His pain was worthwhile, as one of them came out with more HP points than the average McDonald's consumer. I can't lie, I really like how the devs have done some of this new landscape. At home now, I popped, popped, and popped out all of our new Pokemon. I am a great dinosaur father and ran away just like mine did, except I didn't, and went to farm meat instead. Is it just me, or the dinosaurs become even more stupider in this new arc? <laughs> I'm not a very good dinosaur father after all. No, what? Dude, what? Dude, there's no way, bro. My day ended by checking what remaining materials we needed to craft a big forge. We're actually not too far off. As the sun of day 44 started rising, I exited my house and chose violence. After tucking this bro to sleep, I did the same for these penguins. Except these things shall never ever be waking up. Oil was also taken care of. I'm so hyped for our new forge. My urge of violence soon revisited. This poor Megatherium had absolutely no chance. 
After Pokeballing our new tames, I arranged the dinosaurs in our base, just like any dinosaur geek would. We were still lacking some polymer, so I decided to revisit an old friend. To my surprise, he was still alive. I kitted up and headed on out to the swamp cave. Am I crazy for thinking a tiny little frog stood a chance against this bug infested cave? Yes. Yes, I am. I did take the necessary precautions though and put a sleeping bag outside along with a box to store our extra items. I also equipped a very weird combination of armor. As for the noobs that don't know, if you enter this cave without scuba and ghillie armor, you actually take damage from the poison gas inside. In we went, soon coming across the first hostile, an extremely high level spider. Just another day in Australia, I guess. We did what your mom does best and licked endlessly. After licking it enough times, it died. Feeling like Superman after that kill, I went deeper inside and got swarmed by flies flying insects. Our health disintegrated in seconds, but at least we managed to hop outside before it was too late. Before going in again, I stuffed me down our frog's throat to heal up. I decided to be smart, and instead of barging straight into the cave, I killed bugs slowly slowly so I wouldn't get overwhelmed. Look at all that cementing paste. Seeing that we barely made it through the first room of the cave, I decided to pack up. We got a good amount of cementing paste anyway, so I was a happy man. We flew back home on our big bug. Now that I think about it, I might sacrifice him if I ever need paste again. As I arrived home, the Ceratos had just laid more eggs. I am so hyped to have an army of these things. We were so 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 close to crafting a chem bench and a big forge by now. All we needed was obsidian, which we will combine with all the paste we just got to craft polymer. The volcano got its moment of glory and god damn we got a ton of obsidian. We had everything to make a chem bench now and boom, look how quickly it crafts paste. I'm in love with this thing. We still needed more paste for our forge, so on day 46 I cryoed up our megatherium and headed back into the swamp. This time, the bugs stood no chance at all. They were getting absolutely folded. The most difficult challenge here was making sure to not get slop capped by all the berries. I would have no idea why the devs spanned so much bushes in here. Deeper in we went and more bugs felt the power of my megatherium. Titan was farmed by the thousands. Oh, another drop. What the f*** is this piece of sh**? I was happy with all the chitin we farmed, so we dipped. As I came out of the cave, I found a rex about to eat our giant bug. Unfortunately for him, our megatherium wasn't happy with this behavior. The rest of day 46 was spent farming narco berries in the redwoods. Day 47, we crafted up more cementing paste than we will ever need, and crafted a vault to store all of our diamonds. A bit of oil farming later, and boom! We had our very own industrial forge, capable of cooking anything in seconds. Remember those serato eggs we collected a while back? I finally got them to life. Look how cute these little guys look. The male came out with the good health and melee stat, meaning he will now take his father's position as the official baby maker. We even hatched some chicken eggs. Our army is growing by the second. <laughs> Day 48 was spent farming stone rocks with our Doed's hard peen. The whole day was a farming simulator, so to celebrate our hard work, we made the newly raised Ceratosauruses. Well, yeah, you guessed it. We made them have such. In the morning of the next day, I realized that some of the chickens we hatched were useless. So, uh, rest in peace, baby chickens. Wanting to hatch a lot more eggs meant we needed more air conditioners. After building some, we lobbed down three more Cerato eggs. We got two pairs of twins, and they all came out with the good stats. The overseer is definitely trembling right now. More babies meant more hungry bellies to feed, so I had no option but to kill all the wildlife around my base until day 50. I was peacefully farming Tatch when I got jumped by a pack of Daedons and Sabertooths. They clearly weren't happy with the mass murder I did yesterday. We came out on top in the end. That fat beaver will not be missed. Farming wood with a big chicken is just as quick as with that weak beaver. Once happy with all the wood we farmed, I began sketching out a new construction project. I wanted to expand our base on top of the ice here to breathe in all the fresh air of Arc Ascended. A 6x6 area should be more than enough for our needs. After crafting the stone structures we needed, I placed them down and voila! We had the floor of our soon-to-be home complete. I even added some square edges to make the PvE builders happy and not build a completely square-shaped house. I leveled the flooring as day 51 began. A ramp and gate were soon added. I really liked how these thatched stairs look, so I'll definitely be going with those. Large walls were used as we are building the greatest fort this island has ever seen. After the walls came the ceilings and as the sun set it in, our Teresina was used once again to gather wood. Look at all that wood. The following day unfolded by using all the wood we farmed to craft even more structures for the castle. These quarter sized walls came in clutch to patch up the little hole we had above our gate. Ceiling construction continued but man we ran out of stone once again. Mr. Dodecurus was put to hard work. This took up the whole morning. I finished off the ceiling is what you think I'm going to say but I'm drizzled and 
drizzle builds the best castles around. Designing the corners of our roof with the new building mechanics was a thrilling experience. I kept on building the edges of our roof throughout the next day and god damn, look how epic our base looks. Except for those quarter walls, they're ugly. Time to replace them with some windows. What is the point of a roof without stairs? I used the touch steps once again, they just look too epic. And BAM! We now have access to our roof. Day 53 ended by farming thatch with our mammoth and crafting stone gates as on day 54 we began a massive construction project, building a wall around our castle. We have a lot more to do. We of course needed a ton of stone. I'm getting very concerned that we might be overworking our Dodicarus. Never mind that, it's all worth it as we are making a ton of progress. The spikes and gates protecting our cave had to be picked up and before you knew it we had a whole ring of gateways around our castle. Day 55 began by collecting Teresina eggs, soon spotting an imposter amongst us. Among us. Gateways without gates are useless, so we crafted some up and started fixing them in. We even placed a massive behemoth gate, ensuring our fat mammoth could get in and out of the new compound without any trouble. A stone farm run later, and our perimeter was secure. Now was by far the most exciting part of our day, moving everything from the cave base to the castle base. Luckily for us though, our big bug could carry entire structures whilst keeping all the items inside them. Yes, I am in love with this thing. I had to make a big hole in our castle for now, as the bug was too fat. What's up? with all these fat dinos. The morning was spent picking stuff up and placing it back down. Picking stuff up and you guessed it, placing it back down. Once the structures were dealt with, the dinos were pokeballed and lobbed out in the natural sunlight. Day 57 was all about turning the inside of our base from a barren cave into a crafter's paradise. We laid down an army of smithies ensuring that running out of storage is in fact not a problem of ours. Then, with the precision of a dinosaur dentist, we plonked down our big forge, generator, fabricators and chem bench, setting the stage for some crafting magic. The morning of day 58 was a mix of DIY home projects and dino care. We added a bunch of air conditioners by the castle wall. Then there was that wall we took down yesterday. We patched it up, making the place look neat again. The morning was all about getting our dinosaurs lined up and comfy. The castle compound is shaping up really nicely. We need to fill it up with dinosaurs. We need to tame a male megatherium and we need to do a meat run actually. Uh, let's take one of these guys and we'll do a meat run quick. Day 59 began by increasing the population of our chicken and ceratosaurus army significantly, as I really wanted to start doing boss fights. Look at all these young menacing ceratosauruses. Some came out with bad stats, so uh, I sent them to the afterlife. I also wanted to add a male megatherium to our dinosaur army so we could start breeding them up, as they'll be great to take down the broodmother. Whilst looking for one, I found a purple drop that gave us sap and insane saddles. On day 60, Big Bug was feeling like a menace and terrorized a Pelagornis. Man, I love big bug. We also discovered a never seen before dinosaur. Unless you live in Florida. I finally found a male megatherium and used our big bug to pick it up and move it away from its mate. Big bug has a special place in my heart. Dude. Never mind, I hate Big Bug. We don't need him anyway, as I still managed to knock out the Megatherium without any of his help. Upon hearing the roar of a nearby U Tyrannus, I went to slaughter it, as I didn't want our knocked out Megatherium to become its lunch. After completing my mission, I decided to end myself in a nearby lake so I could spawn back at base and return with my Argent Tavis. Oh my god. Looks like I played myself once again. I forgot to place beds down at my castle base when I moved from the cave to the castle. I truly never learned. At least we still had the bed at our first wood base so I spawned in there and instantly got jumped by some raptors. Trick question, two raptors are chasing Drizzle, Drizzle is naked, cold and outnumbered. Who wins? Get in, get in, get in. <laughs> no! Oh, 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 oh! Boys, I'm too good. Boys, I'm too good. I'm actually too good at this game, bro. I made some primitive gear and replaced the wall with a window, soon putting these raptors to sleep. The hide from their bodies were turned into parachutes, which I used to get home safe and sound. Day 61. I returned back to the lake where I decided to drown myself and retrieved my loot bag. Our Megatherium was also tamed up by now, so I pokeballed him. Back at base, I made a lot of dinosaurs mate and placed a bed for obvious reasons. The Megatherium babies finally popped for me to claim. Oh, 
Oh boy, I can't wait to use these things on the Broodmother. Speaking about the Broodmother, it was time to start collecting the artifacts so we could summon her later. To the clever cave we headed. Zooming through the map on this thing never gets old. In we went, soon getting attacked by a lot of bugs and bloodthirsty bats. Our Serato dealt with them with ease. Drop spotted, drop collected, and holy moly, look at this clutch shirt. Artro players seem to be an issue as whenever we bit them, we took a ton of damage. I had to stop for a while to heal up our dinosaur. Once at full health, I explored the cave a bit deeper and there it was, the artifact of the clever. We zoomed back to base and arrived on day 62 where we popped more chicken eggs. Our army will soon be unstoppable. The rest of day 62 was spent zooming across the entire island until we arrived at another artifact cave. We entered it as the next day started and were having no trouble at all until the whole lobby attacked us. As you all know however, Drizzle always clutches up. Going further in, we came across one of the Florida crocodiles we spotted a few days back. Its mouth was wide open, which usually means they want to be tamed. Down I went to feed it. Oh, oh no. I got pranked. It snapped its mouth right at me, nearly eating me whole. I ran for my life and ordered my Serato to sacrifice its life for me. I truly believe in miracles now as I somehow managed to hop back on my dinosaur and killed both of these evil lizards. We were at least rewarded with the best Stego saddle in arc history. Right after the drop lay the artifact of the hunter. We made our way out right as day 64 started and spent the entire day zooming to the lava cave for the final artifact to summon the broodmother. Upon exploring this cave though, I soon realized that there was no way we shall be making it across the lava pits with our Ceratosaurus. So I cryoed our friend, shot a flare gun, stashed our loot somewhere safe and jumped in the lava so we could spawn back at base. On day 66 and 67, I tamed the moss chops and forced it to farm polymer which we then used to craft a cooker which we then used on day 68 to craft medical brews. But no one cares about that. The reason why we came back to base was to recruit our big cat for our lava cave expedition. Day 69, my favorite day, was spent pouncing our cat all the way to the lava cave. The cave's lava pits were no match for our nimble cat and before you knew it we had the third and final artifact to summon the fat queen spider. Back at home I saddled and lined up our newly grown up army dinosaurs. The only dinosaurs that we were missing is a Daedon and a Tyrannus, which is what I set out to accomplish on day 71. A level 85 Daedon will do just fine. I couldn't find any good Tyrannuses until I did and also made it our own as the sun rose on day 72. This UT was desperate for some level ups so I flew off a cliff with our Serato to find explorer notes. Two explorer notes later and this thing was a tank. Back at the abode, more baby killing was done to level up more of our boss army. We were finally ready to do a boss fight when two backstabbing Terezinas went ballistic and began attacking my dinosaurs through the floor. This is what a top tier $50 remastered game looks like. Some dinos died including our U Tyrannus and Daedon which I replaced in the evening of day 73 and the morning of day 74. After healing up our army, we were finally ready to take on the Broodmother, I think. The Broodmother isn't just a spider, it's the epitome of arachnid horror. With her ability to cast expansive webs, she can immobilize even the mightiest of creatures. We shall be charging right into her nest where she commands an army of Arenio spiders and unleashes poison balls inflicting severe damage on anyone stupid enough to take her on. I am that stupid someone, so I crowd my army and off we go to the green obelisk. Upon arrival, I lobbed out our army and waited until sunrise till they all woke up. It's finally time lads, in we go! Hearing the broodmother scream made me scream back, giving our army the U Tyrannus courage buff. Our army went in and began taking massive bites out of her chitin shielded skin. Nice, okay, nice. We're doing really good damage, we're doing really good damage. Get her boys! She put up a good fight, claiming some lives from our army. Oh no, that's a terror dead. Come on, boys. But in the end, it was only a matter of time till we overwhelmed her. Let's go, boys. Our well-deserved broodmother trophy, along with some elements. Thank you very much. The army did pull through, but showed some sign of weakness. Many of our dinosaurs suffering a lot of damage taken. We will definitely be needing a stronger lineup for the upcoming bosses, which are much stronger to say the least. I arrived back home on day 76 and found a spino stuck in the snow. What? I crafted up stone walls as we're going to tame something that looks exactly like you. We flew to the ocean and lobbed out our dolphin. As we are swimming through the ocean, you're probably wondering what I'm planning on taming that resembles you. Say hello to the ugly fish we spotted a while back. The stone structures I crafted were soon used to create the ultimate trap, except I forgot to get a gate. Oh my god bro, I forgot the gate. Not my best moment, but it was soon 
being dealt with. After crafting the gate, I flew back to the ocean, cryoed my bird up, and baited the high level fish to our trap. The dumb thing fell right for it, and before you knew it, we were railing it with trank arrows. It was only a matter of time before it went night night. Let's go. After feeding it the finest cuts of meat, it tamed up and I gave it a very creative name. I cryoed ugly fish and flew back home, arriving right as the day came to an end. The next day began by farming oil and a lot of metal that got lobbed right into our big forge. I then handcrafted a saddle for ugly fish, soon lobbing him out in the ocean. Off on a deep sea adventure we go. You might think I'm crazy heading into a deep sea cave, which yes, I am, but I need the artifact of the brute to summon the the Megapithecus. So in we go. We soon turned an annoying eel into a snack. His friends came for revenge, but you already know your boy is way too quick for them. I then led the gang of angry eels far from the artifact and quickly headed back to grab it. Artifact hours, out we go. Upon exiting the cave, ugly fish was feeling brave, so we began fighting a shark. This bravery soon left when the shark's friends arrived. Getting bullied made our big fish cry. Oh my god, I nearly died from that. I cryoed him up and once back home I began lobbing out all of our boss dinosaurs. Our evening was spent farming berries with our fat mammoth. Day 78 began by zooming across the map, making our way to another artifact cave. At least this one wasn't in the ocean. In we went and man this place looks incredible. Our serato was too big to fit through this passageway. Yeah, we're not getting through this. Thank the lord for cryopods. Hearing the sound of angry bats, I lobbed out our tickle chicken and began tearing everything apart. No, oh, we got rabies. For the most part, getting through this cave was really easy and seemed to be a pretty straightforward task until I realized we needed to dip our feet into a system of underwater passageways. Ah, uh, yeah. Not a pleasant surprise. Fear not, however, as I am Drizzle, and as we all know, Drizzle always clutches up. And I went easily swimming past any predators thanks to the help of our scuba flippers and focal chili. My stamina was quickly depleting, but luckily for us, I found a little ledge we could Rest on to catch our breath. Back in we went, dodging every dinosaur with ease. Soon spotting a blue drop, I bolted to loot it and got a ascendant boots. Right after that, we spotted a tech-like pillar coming out of the wall, which usually means we're getting close to an artifact. There were a ton of hostiles blocking our passageway, so Tickle Chicken was used to send them to the Gulag. I must admit though, that Sarko is really smart for staying back there. He left me no option but to humiliate him by breaking his ankles. A few meters past the angry lizard and there it was, the artifact of the pack. Two artifacts down, one to go. Tickle Chicken was cryoed and we dipped quicker than your dad did. Not before killing, more annoying bugs of course. Nice, we're out. Let's go boys. Finally out, we zoomed our way into day 79, where we found a crazy Ohio citizen fighting at our gates. Dude, what is this bro? How is it in the mesh? Ark truly never fails to impress me. All of our dinosaurs sank underneath the mesh. I was left with no option but to go into ghost mode to save them. This is not considered cheating, okay? Don't you dare comment this is considered cheating because I will rage so much. The next artifact on the list is located in Carno Cave, which has a landscape perfectly suited for our big cat. We we pounced until the sunset and entered the cave. It looked absolutely stunning. We traversed deeper inside, even swimming through a puddle of water. I've lived in this cave many times before, so I knew exactly where to go. With me also being the best arc player alive, the artifact was snagged without much trouble. I must admit, I really did enjoy jumping around this cave on our cat. Getting out was just as straightforward as getting in, and before you knew it, we were out and had all the artifacts to summon the Megapithecus. I was swimming to the mainland when I couldn't Hell but admire how incredible the sky looked. I really like this game. Sometimes I pounced over the gate back home on day 80, where I soon began lining up our boss army. Thousands and thousands of fiber was farmed right after. Hard work, of course, must be celebrated with more mating. And as the sun set, I appreciated how cool our lined up boss army looked. Mating was over by now, leaving us with chicken eggs to collect. I don't want my boss army being harmed, so I set up a Ceratosaurus on aggressive settings, ensuring no crazy Ohio citizens will cause havoc. The following day began with violence. Some people might call me a terrible human being, which I tend to agree, but these sacrifices are necessary. We soon ran out of babies, but luckily for us, our chickens just keep producing eggs like there's no tomorrow. The fat pig finally got his moment of glory, healing up the boss army to full HP. More babies were sacrificed, which finally made me feel a bit sad, so I decided to give that a little break. I crafted crop plots and planted citronel, as I wanted to tame a brachiosaurus very soon. I'd need to wait for the crops 
crops to grow. So in the meantime, I ventured out to tame the massive gator, which nearly ended my arc career. I zoomed away from our abode, stopping to play target practice on a bird. <laughs> That bird might have survived, but the same couldn't be said about these unlucky penguins I stumbled across. You know how it goes, boys. Boom! Dude, oh my god, bro. Piece of shit. The search for the giant alligator lasted till day 82 with absolutely zero success. We even ventured all the way to the swamps, which went as expected. Oh! No, bro! <laughs> this long haul trip wasn't for nothing at least, as I discovered a new resource. Wool? What is wool? My Serato and I still had leeches sucking on us, which I of course had to remove by burning myself. I wanted to tame a big alligator so badly that I even revisited that cave where we nearly got eaten a few days back. Oh! Oh my god, bro. Upon spotting a level 150, I was filled with excitement. I equipped the ghillie armor and went down to finally tame- Huh? Is it dead? I think it's- ah! oh! Oh! With my armor broken and bone snapped, I rushed to my Serato. Distracted by a Sarko, the massive Dino Sukus nearly swallowed me whole. Ah! Soon to be tamed. No! No, no, no! Run, 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 run! I hopped on our tame and dashed away, soon getting cornered and left with no option but to fight this thing head on. We're so dead, bro. No! Get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out! Get me out! Our Serato sacrificed his own life so we could live. I will never ever forget him. We exited the cave on day 83 where I stashed my loot and spawned back at base. Whilst flying back to retrieve our loot, I realized that our old friend Pete was still alive. Thanks to Ark's new tracking system, we were able to reunite with our best friend. Oh Pete, I miss you so much. We flew Pete back to our loot stash and flew back home. I'm never trying to tame a big alligator again. Day 84 started with naming a newborn chicken, evicting an Argentavis and cryoing up our boss army as we shall be taking on the Megapithecus very soon. The Megapithecus, a colossal adversary. This towering behemoth is renowned for its devastating power, unleashing earth-shattering punches that can crush the mightiest of foes. But beware, its true terror lies in its ability to hurl massive boulders with deadly accuracy, a skill that spells doom for unprepared challengers. Accompanying this giant are its fearsome monkey minions, notorious for their ability to dismantle even the most formidable dinosaurs with ease. It was finally time to face the big monkey boy, so I uncrowed all of our boss army near the blue obelisk. And once all of them woke up on day 85, we activated the monkey portal. Here we go, boys. Can't lie, I am a little bit nervous. We're in. I whistled our chickens and Serratos to follow me and led them up the stairs. Attack! In they go! Guns blazing whilst I'm constantly buffing them with the u Tyrannus. Nice, nice, nice. We're doing good damage, we're doing good damage. It began smashing my dinosaurs on the concrete and lobbing giant boulders at us, but we kept pulling through. Come on, boys, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We eventually managed to corner it where the evil monkey soon met his end. This rewarded us with the monkey trophy and 40 elements. The only thing standing between us and the evil over here was the dragon. Back at base, I placed down the monkey flag and placed our big cat in a very tactical position. Day 86 was spent farming metal, which I shall not show you as it's super boring. 80 minutes later. That's a lot of metal. Day 87 was a special day as we shall be taking on the caverns of Lost Hope, a deep sea underwater cave home to Mozas, Lesios, Megalodons, Dunklios, Jellyfish, you name it. This cave has everything you never want to come across, including the chance of an Alpha Megalodon. And here I am with a harmless dolphin. Where am I entering this cave, you may ask, for the artifact of the cunning? In we go! First. Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 Oh my god, oh my god, we're already gonna die, we're already gonna die, and we barely entered. Just two meters in, and we're already getting fried alive. Down to half HP, I need to be on my best game. I managed to avoid any danger for a while, soon making it to the back of the cave. I pokeballed my dolphin, and ventured around on foot for a while, soon discovering that I could ride my pteranodon in here. There was nothing to be found, so I headed back in. Oh my, okay, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. 
Get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. Yeah, those electric eels made me a little petrified. I grew the courage to face what had to be done and popped my dolphin whilst jumping back inside. We broke their ankles, soon finding the passageway which led to the artifact. It was filled with the deadliest of ocean creatures, including that alpha megalodon we talked about. Oh boy, this looks like a GG. We bolted back out to grab our bearings and headed back inside. Eels hot on our tail, I hopped off our dolphin, grabbed the artifact. Just go for it, just go for it. Nice, 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 no, 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 run, 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 you stupid bitch. oh my god, 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 you already know, Drizzle always clutches up, woo, the adrenaline rush was surreal, boys, the art gods were definitely on our side, one artifact down, three to go, I'm coming for you, dragon, after such a rush, I wanted something a bit more mellow, so I grabbed my beloved moss chops, and off we go to far. Dude, oh my god, bro. A purple supply drop soon made me forget about the passing of our new friend. The next day, we grabbed our Megaterium as we shall be heading back to the Swamp Cave for the artifact of the MU. This went as smooth as expected, exiting the cave as the day was coming to a close. On day 89, I headed out to yet another artifact cave, which was a very enjoyable experience, till it wasn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, sh bro. Oh my god, bro. Run, run, run. Dude, I keep getting stuck everywhere, bro. What? I hate this game, bro. I quickly geared back up and rushed back to the crime scene. The sounds of the bats soon sent me bolting out like a little girl. Luckily for us, however, our Argent Tavis felt like his afternoon snack. I couldn't find my loot bag anywhere till I caught a glimpse of it in the ceiling. Don't ask me how that's even possible. Is this game serious? I really hate this game. With our loot retrieved, I made my way to the artifact, dodging all of the bloodthirsty bats, and just about managed to get out in one piece. Only one artifact to go. The dragon is definitely getting a little bit scared by now. The rest of day 89 was spent doing your usual boring arc necessities. In preparation, take on our hardest challenge yet, the snow cave. The snow cave, a place where only the bravest souls tread. Within this icy labyrinth, temperatures plummet to a bone-chilling negative 30 degrees Celsius, challenging the very limits of survival. Inhabited by some fearsome creatures such as the dire bears, yetis and menacing wolves. But the most treacherous of them all, the Perlovias, lurking beneath the snow, ready to spring a stunning ambush on an unsuspecting survivor. Adding to the danger, the creatures here are extraordinarily powerful, with some reaching the staggering level of 340. And here I am, with a wooden shield. Only a few steps inside, and wolves were already hot on our tail, leaving me no option but to grapple to the ceiling. I tried gunning these things down, but I didn't even make a dent in them. Juking them was the only option, soon entering a room filled with the craziest Florida men. Adrenaline must have got the best of me, as I began grappling like my life depended on it, which it did I guess. A few close calls later, I made it inside a safe point, guarded by large crystals. Of course though, wolves soon tracked my scent again. Grappled to the ceiling, I began working our way closer to the artifact, and it would be only a matter of time till it was our... I'm dead, yeah, GG. One unfortunate death wasn't going to stop me. So the next day, I quickly farmed up some Tinto Berries and crafted them into medical brews. I also crafted metal spikes for a 200 IQ play I had in mind. Back in we go. Wolves were dodged with ease. After all, I am an ARC veteran. And we're dead. We're dead already. That's really good, boys. That's really good. Nice. Here we go again. We quickly re-kitted and bolted back to the cave. You know what they say, boys. Third time is the charm. <gasps> no, not again, bro. Oh my god, how? I spawned at a bag we left outside the cave and sacrificed my life to lead all the creatures off the ledge. This worked wonders as retrieving our kit was really easy. We reached the big crystals once again right when day 92 started. This time I was way more prepared for these tight corridors thanks to the metal spikes we crafted and the tickle chickens I brought with us. This doesn't mean it was a walk in the park though. These polar bears pack a really painful bite. Nearly the entire day was spent slicing through dinosaurs, always protecting ourselves of course with metal spikes. Arriving at the safe zone, I took my time to spike it off and place down sleeping bags. I stashed the majority of my loot in my Terezina and began spider manning our way to the artifact. There it was. Right as day 93 came along, it was all ours. I honestly never had a doubt we would conquer this cave. Hello. Hello. Ah! I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. No, bro.
I died. Our way back to retrieve the artifact, I spotted a red drop, which gave us the best machine gun I've ever seen. With the artifact and loot retrieved, out of this nightmare we go. I am never returning. As the next day was upon us, I farmed metal, which soon turned into rifle bullets for my machine gun. This shall be used to gun down the dragon, which we shall be fighting tomorrow. You see, the dragon isn't like anything we've faced before. It resides in a literal volcano. This colossal beast commands the sky with its enormous wings, darting through the air with terrifying agility. Its fearsome weapon is its breath, a scorching blaze that can engulf enemies in a sea of flames. But the dragon's might doesn't end there. It can summon a host of flying minions, adding chaos and danger to the already blistering battleground. It also has a massive dip. Tomorrow was upon us. Oh boys, I'm hyped. I lobbed out all of our dinosaurs at the Red Obelisk, and once they woke, I activated the portal. Realizing that our u Tyrannus didn't get teleported in made me a little bit worried. I whistled everyone to follow me and began unloading rounds of lead. <laughs> The beast soon landed, so I charged towards it. My army finally came to support me. Back in disguise it went, soon unleashing its minions, followed by a devastating fireball, killing one of our chickens. Once it landed, we charged back at it. All was going well, until it released its scorching fire breath, cooking most of our army in seconds. Oh boy, this was not looking good. With only a few dinos left, we kept on nipping at its feet, hoping for a miracle. This miracle never transpired, leaving me alone on our very last Serato, running for our life. Dude, no way bro. I thought we were gonna do this. I tried to gun it down, but all was useless, soon being put out of my misery by a fireball. Oh my god, bro. Oh boy, this was a bummer. Upon respawning at base, I began building a bigger raising area, as if I still had time to raise a boss army before the 100 days ended. The next day, reality kicked in. I realized that there was a 0% chance of us beating this challenge, as not only did we need to raise an army to fight the dragon and then the overseer, we also needed to farm all the artifacts again. Instead, I decided to enjoy my last few days on this island and tame new dinosaurs that I never tried taming before. Our eyes were set on finding a Brachiosaurus. After a day of exploration, I finally spotted one of these massive yet majestic titans. It being only level 10 was perfect, as I have no clue how to tame one. Apparently, all I have to do is shoot lead right below its kneecaps. Okay, that's where you do the tour for. Okay. Our Serato turned into a little girl and bolted off the scene, leaving me alone to take care of this giant herbivore. Is it out? Yes! Oh my god, we did it. I shoved berries down its throat, which was enough for it to become our own. Not only was this thing capable of farming tons of resources, it also one-tapped an entire Bronto. After fooling around on it for a while, I went back to base and crafted the saddle of the most powerful creature we shall be taming yet. On day 98, we set out to make it ours, flying to the ocean and keeping our eyes peeled for those giant turtles. Stopping to admire an alpha mosasaur, I soon stumbled across something essential for our turtle taming journey. A jellyfish. The whole day was spent searching for turtles, finally spotting one getting absolutely violated by a pack of megalodons. I tried my best to save it, but all was for nothing. Fortunately for us, we spotted a level 85 the next morning. I began feeding it biotoxin and after three feedings, this prehistoric sea tank was our new best friend. I instantly began testing it out, making it not kill one, but two lead sickties, taking our turtles HP up to 20,000 HP. The rest of day 99 was spent swimming through the ocean on our new friend. We also discovered that he could walk on land and at long last day 100 we crawled up on the same beach where we took our first breaths in this new dance our world. We might have not been able to beat the challenge but what means even more to me is that you still made it till the end of this very video as I get more money. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this 100 days video, you will definitely love this one on screen right now. Click it, click it, click it.